Hey everyone, I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips and in this clay share tutorial I'm going to show you how to build your very own little kiln table. Oh my goodness, look at this right here. So I'm going to show you how to build this. Now the reason you want to use a kiln table for something like a test kiln or this doll kiln like I have here is because if we don't use this little table this is going to sit right on the floor and when you open it up to get into it you're going to have to bend down all the way down here. I mean just imagine, look, you're going to be like this. See, you can hardly see me getting into your kiln. That is not good for you. You don't want to do that. So I'm going to show you, it cost me $13 to get the supplies to build this kiln table. I'm going to show you how to do it. It's so easy. Now the kiln I have here is an L&L doll kiln. It's the DLH11-DX, so that's the model I have. This is my larger kiln, just to give you a, a little reference point for scale. This is the E23T, so this is a really large kiln, but I don't always need to fire that big kiln. Sometimes I need to fire the little one. So I'm going to show you how to build your table so when you're using your small kiln, you don't have to bend over and hurt your back or get in an uncomfortable position on the floor. So let's get started and make our own little kiln table. All right, so here I have the materials to make my kiln table. It's actually really, really simple. It's just cinder blocks and I have a paver. Now that paver is 16 inches by 16 inches square and that'll become the top, the tabletop. And these are the legs. Now I'm only using four of these because I'm gonna stack two on two and that'll make a table that is a good height for me. I'm five feet two, so I don't want it to be any taller, but if you are taller than that, you might want to go three bricks high and we'll talk about that more. So what you do is you go and you buy your bricks, you get your paver. You could also use a kiln shelf if you didn't have a paver. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's just the paver costs $5. Kiln shelves cost like $25. So paver is what it is. You just need to have a non-combustible surface. You cannot use wood or anything that um, will catch on fire or melt with heat. So that's why we're using these concrete pavers. And I'm gonna tell you the most difficult part about this is lifting these, they're really heavy. So if you have somebody around that can help you out, grab them and have them help you go by the cinder blocks and the paver. And make sure you wear gloves because these will tear your hands up. Now, the base, my kiln stand, is 15 inches by 15 inches. So I know when I get a 16 by 16 paver that that stand will fit on it. So make sure you check your kiln stand before you get your paver. So get a paver that's big enough for your kiln stand. All right, so we're gonna put these in place and I've got a helper. So um, let me just talk a little bit about where I'm putting them. So we'll just, I'll just come back down here. I'm right next to my big kiln. So you need to make sure you stay two feet from anything combustible, that's wood right? But kilns can be closer than that to each other. So I'm going to have 12 inches between this kiln here, my big kiln, and my baby kiln. So they can be near each other. It will not be an issue at all. My floor in my studio is concrete, which means if I wanted to, I could put it right on the floor. But like we talked about, I'm down here now kneeling on the floor. This is where I would be if I was going to try to unload the kiln without building this kiln table. It would not be comfortable. It's very hard on your knees and it just wouldn't be an enjoyable experience. So we're gonna build this kiln table. So let's do this now. So let's go ahead. I want the first brick, um, I'm gonna put it here. So that's the first one. And I, you know what, I'll lay the first one in. So when you look at these, you'll notice that we have holes on one side, flat on the other. We have a smooth side and then you have this side here, which has a little groove in it. I'm gonna put this, right here because I want the ugly side pointing away. I don't want to see that groove there and I want the nice smooth flat here. So we're going to do one and then the next one right next to it. Just line them up. Now if I was going to do three levels, so if you're tall, so I said I'm 5'2", right? So I'm only doing two levels high. If you are taller, if you're 5'8 or taller, you want to do three levels high. It'll be more comfortable for you. So this is my first level and make sure you have this where you want it. My outlet is here so I know I won't have any problems plugging in my kiln. I've got plenty of space here between this kiln and believe it or not there is space between this wall and the kiln. So we are good. So now we're going to do the next level. Normally when we lay cinder blocks you want to alternate. I'm not going to do that because I'm only doing two levels high. I'm not worried about tipping, so I'm not going to alternate direction. But if you're doing three, you might want to turn. So let's do the next level. Let's see. Am I, gonna, I guess I'm doing it. 
<laughs> I do have a, a helper on standby, but um, I think we're good. Line this up. Because once you get this put together, you're not going to be able to, like, move it. So our next brick. My big pet peeve is this right here. Make sure this is lined up. That looks pretty good. And then the last step is to put your paver on top. So I've got this one. This one is actually, I couldn't get a gray to match my cinder block. I wanted a gray one, but they didn't have any. This is actually called Palomino. And this is the tabletop I'm going to use. And then next, we'll be placing the kiln. So you get this on here. And you know, if you put this in and you realize it's not lined up and you don't like its placement, you can just take it down and put it back up. All right, so here we have our kiln table. Look how cute that is. And now we're going to set our kiln on it. All right, so here we have the completed kiln table, but we've got to put the kiln on it. So you're definitely going to want a helper for this because these little kilns weigh almost 100 pounds. That's, that's a little too much for me to lift on my own. I probably could do it, but it wouldn't be great for my back. So having someone who can do it on their own or can help you do it would be best. So now you have to place your kiln stand on your table. So this is the moment where you decide if you're going to have a kiln vent, you need to make sure you place it so that the vent is in the direction you want that. Now I do have another class which I'm going to be filming after this, so it might not be up right this second, but it will be shortly. Um, and showing you how to install your own vent on a kiln that didn't come pre-drilled for a vent installation. So I'll be doing that for you too. So that, check that video out as well. All right, you ready? Let's put the kiln on. Let's, this is the moment we've been waiting for, right? We want to put the kiln on the table. You want to lift it up? This, my lifting helper. Lift. Look at that. Fabulous. So just going to make sure this kiln, remember 15 by 15 here. Make sure it's going to fit on your paver. Line this up where you want it. I'm happy with that. Now, I want my kiln to be so that the control box is facing the front. It's a little off, yeah. How's that? Does everybody think that's good? I think that's good. That's good. So we're going to put the kiln on so that the controller faces the front. Thanks. You did great. And you can scooch it around a little bit if you need to adjust it. I'm just checking all four sides. Now, once you get the kiln on there, you're going to want to make sure that your cord reaches your outlet. This is something that you could measure for before because you want to make sure before you build your table that the cord will actually work. And I have checked it, but you know, we'll just undo this here and plug it in. And my outlet's back here, so I have to go back between the kilns. All right, so we're plugged in. Turn her on, lights up, it's ready to go. And the great thing about this now is when I need to get into this kiln, I don't have to bend down. I don't have to hunch over onto the ground. I have it raised up nice and high. And again, it was only $13. The cinder blocks were like $2 each and the paver was $5. So if you're gonna build a kiln stand or a kiln table that is a little taller, it'll cost you $4 more. That's it. So this is why I'm saying I'm 5'2". Look at how this height is for me. This is perfect. If you are 5'8 or taller, do three cinder blocks high because that will make the perfect size table for you. For me, um, I really like this height. If it was another cinder block higher, I would be like going up on my tiptoes to try to get down into my kiln. That wouldn't be good. It's This kiln, do you see the difference in height? This one's just a tiny bit taller. It's almost too much for me to get into. So there you have it. Kiln table. How cute and easy is this to do? And honestly, it'll make it so much easier for firing your little baby kiln, your test kiln or doll kiln. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining me. I can't wait until we meet again next time in the studio.